Can anyone identify what that is? People over... I'm 40 and I know what it is. I've worked on these. I've only worked on replacing them. I've I have worked on adjusting some of them, but I've worked on replacing a lot of these that a cement works used to work at. These were the common form of whatever they do. Let me show you what's inside. And then tomorrow uh, evening, when everyone's had a chance to make some guests, I'll explain what it is and how it works. But if you know what that is, I've covered it up with a bit of tape because it tells you what it is on side. But let me show you the insides. Very crude, reliable item. So the bottom bit's just a little pot, yeah? This one's been cleaned out, but that would normally contain oil. And there's a little plunger look that fits in there like that. And it's got some holes in it. And then on top, there's a a, a, a a metal bit, and it goes into that coil. So if anyone could... And there's a little tab there, look, that can be adjusted. So when you put that on there, look, if you screw that up, this will go up and down. So if anyone knows what that is and you're under 50, maybe even 60 or 40 if you've retrofitted some stuff to it, yeah? There'll be old people screaming at the screen now about what this is, but it's a very clever little device and it's crafty in its pure simplicity. <laughs> my, my dog started barking now, so the car outside as I try to record this. I'll just wait for him to stop fucking kicking off at the person that's outside to murder me. Yesterday, I asked if anyone knew what this device was, and now, 24 hours later, I know some of you have not been able to contain your excitement, I'll reveal what it is. This is called an oil dash pot, and what it is, is it's a protective device for a motor, and it trips the motor out should the current exceed the rate of the current as identified by this plate here. It's a mechanical thing that uses oil damping, solenoid type technology, and some other bonkers madness. It looks quite old and antiquated, but the secret is, is what they did was, they took this, got rid of the oil, replaced it with the bar metallic strip, and that's pretty much what a motor overload is made out of nowadays. But I'll show you how this one works, because it is both cunning and simple in its execution, although it looks like it was probably made by a watch manufacturer, because this thing is, that's why I saved it. I've even made this little plinth for it lot because mwah, it's pucker. This will work for a thousand years and still work. This bottom bit, this brass little cup, is called the dash pot. That's where the dashing is for the dashing pots. Let me unscrew that for you and show you the magic that is with our inside. There we go. Let's, oh, that's got a good view of that, yeah? Inside there is a piston. I'll come back to that in a minute. And in there, look, it's just a cup. And if I tip it upside down, I can make a ball appear out of it. Not really. So, yeah, so in there, that would have an oil in a, a fine, light oil. And then this part here is the piston. And as you can see in there, there's a lot of different sized holes. And in the top of it, there is one hole, which is just there. Let me see if I can show you that. And what you can do is, if you remove this circlet that's just here, you can spin this disc to expose these different size holes. So don't worry, we're getting there, yeah? So there's a hole there, a big hole, and then this has got loads of different size holes in it. So yeah, there's little holes in it, right? So what you do is, you take the viscosity of the oil you've used, and then you measure these holes with a measuring pin, which tells you the exact size of these holes, and between the viscosity of the oil and the size of the hole, the piston, will be retarded, oh, retarded when it's pulled up. So if you use the bigger hole and a light oil, it will pull up easier. It will be less retarded. If you use one of the little tiny holes and a thick oil, it will take a long while to pull it up. That will become apparent in a moment. But thinner oil, bigger oil comes up quick. Thicker oil, smaller oil comes up slower. Let me demonstrate what that's doing with something that I've got lying around here. So I've got a syringe here, yeah, I just keep these around the house when I'm doing heroin. So if I pull the syringe, I can't pull it that fast because that's limited by the amount of air that can get through this hole. So even if I try and pull it really hard, yeah, it still retards the pulling of it for a little bit. If I put my finger over the hole, it really retards the pulling of it a little bit because the air has to escape down the side and it also pops back. So let me just explain that again, yeah? Quick, no return. However... If I form a vacuum on the end, air will still get past the syringe. And it's taking a quite a bit of effort to pull that. And even when I pull it right to the end, which took me a while, 
it will still pop back of its own accord. That is an important mechanical feature of why this dash pot does what it does. So now I've explained that bit, let me move on to another bit of it. Hold on to what I've just told you. We've got to bring all the bits together, yeah? This coil here is a wire wound piece of coil. And rather than a CT or anything like that, you put the load current of the motor, you put the feed near and take the load current out of here. And that effectively makes it into a core like a solenoid and it will have a magnetic -y type shit thing in the middle. That magnetic -y type shit thing will try and pull on this part here, it will try and pull it up, but only when there's enough current. So if your motor is a 20 amp motor and you put 20 amps with this coil, it will not try and pull this bit upwards. Therefore, it will not try and overload. However, if you was to put 40 amps through this, it will start to pull the piston like a sewing or like with a magnet up. When it's being pulled up, it will be retarded by the amount of oil and the hole that's been chosen in the dash pot. Wait there. So basically, if 20 amps goes through this, let's pretend this is the core, yeah, and that's sat in there. If 20 amps goes through it, which is the allowed current of the motor, say on the faceplate, bits fell out. There's no reason for it to try and pull it up. There's not enough current, not enough magnetic force being created to pull it up. However, if 40 amps is pulled through it, the coil is dragged through the solenoid. Now that would happen pretty quickly, just shoot through like a rocket. But because of the retardation from the oil in the dash pot, it moves up slowly and slowly and slowly. And the effort required is large and the time takes longer. Then up here, you'd have a switch or a contact and as it passes through, you can see that, can't you? Oh, here we go. As it passes through eventually, it would push up out the top and it would hit a contact. That contact would make the motor trip out. It would cut the control circuit. Therefore, it would trip the electricity supply. Let's put it all together. So going right back to motors now, if a motor's full load current is 20 amps in this case, and it runs more than happily at 20 amps, that's fine. This will never lift the shaft enough to trip the motor. However, if it goes over 20 amps, it'll act upon this brass shaft here with magnety shit or whatever it does. I'm not going to go into magnets in this video. I've got a whole video on magnets. And it'll pull that shaft up. That shaft will be delayed, however, because it's got to move through the oil. Because when you start a motor, for so many seconds when you start it, it pulls far more current. Sometimes hundreds of amps, say on a 20 amp motor, than it would to get going. But once it's going, it uses 20 amps. So the current would go like this. You'd start the motor and it'd go whoomph really, really high. It'd gradually come back down, 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 down. And then it'd start running at its normal operating current. So it's effectively having a time delay. A bit like, I don't know, a tight D breaker or a time delayed RCD. But that time delay is being caused by the oil and the piston. And that is an old dash pot. Not very often seen nowadays. So what you do is you buy yourself this faceplate. This one is 65, 60, 50 to 43. So it's got a 43 amp to 65 amp range. You buy the faceplate, or you used to buy the faceplate, and that would come with a piston. And when you assemble it from the bits, you'd put the right faceplate on, which would be here. You'd set the right piston with the right holes and the right viscosity of oil. And then when you put it back together, this little bit here will indicate on the front here where it's set to. Let me put it back together and I'll show you. So here's where we are, yeah? I've put the correct faceplate on. I've selected the correct hole size and I've put the right oil in it to the right level. Then if you look carefully at that, it says 65, 60, 50, 43. I want to set to 43. The 43 amps is technically just a time delay. So I'd wind the dash pot up and you'll see that silver thing there is starting to rise. And I'd wind it up till it reads the amps that I want. Uh, hopefully you're zoomed in on that now and that's at 43 now when i start my motor current flows down this cable acts in here as a coil comes out this cable and feeds the motor but within here if there is too much current it starts to pull the shaft up like that and it's pulling it up pulling it up pulling it up and if it gets above this bit of metal it trips it obviously that's what happened in fault operation in normal operation we start the motor the motor energizes and starts to drag the thing up because the 20 amp motor will pull 120 amps down. It starts up, it starts to pull up, it starts to pull up. But then, as the motor starts to spin and get going, the current reduces, and the natural gravity and suction of the oil 
starts to drag it back down. And throughout its, its existence, the piston is being acted by the magnet, which keeps it hovering around like that, like I'm showing there, going up and down. And if it stops, it drop all the way down. And if you start it again, it will start to come up. And if it overloads, it pops out the top. And all it is, is a mechanical switch with an electrical mechanical coil that operates on the shaft. And the delay is caused by the oil and the viscosity of it. That is an oil dash pot. And again, these are how it's done now. But they're always been replaced by a biometallic strip. And the delay has been replaced. It's just been miniaturised and changed. I rescued this one from a cement works that I used to work at. From about 1999 to about 2006. And I, I, I contracted there for years and years after. There's another version of overloads that are called heaters. I've not been able to get my hands on one of them. An Allen and Heath heater system where it uses the same kind of thing. But it has little heaters, literally heaters that get hot. That bend biometallic strips. That's what came after dash pots. We had a number of these dash pots on our larger motors. Because they were just very, very reliable. And the motors were very, very, very old. And there were Allen Heath heaters, which I'm still trying to get my hands on if anyone's got them so I could demonstrate it. And then obviously we went to electrical overloads, like the ones you see with the... I'll put a picture of an electrical overload in here. If you're on YouTube, watch this on YouTube. And then now we've basically gone to electronic versions, little CTs and all sorts of coming. So yeah, very antiquated technology. But this process, delaying the current on the startup is still used today in Type D and time delay breakers. So yeah, that's an old dash part. If you ever come across something that looks like this... That's what it is. And uh, bear in mind that the oil needs to be right. The number needs to be right. The oil needs to be right. They are old, but they work. But if you put the wrong oil in there or mistreat them, they just won't function correctly at all. And obviously, what some people used to do is if some motor was tripping a lot, you'd wind it right down. And it wouldn't ever trip. And you'd melt your motor or cause a fire. And if you was really crafty bastard, you'd just... Drop the entire thing out. So if there's having motor problems and you want to try, try a motor, see if it was the motor that's fucked or whatever, you'd drop the dash pot out, stop it tripping. I've heard people putting chewing gum in the holes and all sorts of shenanigans, yeah, but they're very fine art. They're, you can see how many bits of um, you can see how many bits they've got in them. Lot made by a watchmaker, made by a skill man. That's the old dash pot. I made a little stand for it. I'm gonna paint the stand black now. I'm gonna display that in my office as part of my motors course. So yeah, oil dash pots. More overloads coming soon. I'm on the bag. If anyone's got any Allen West heater overloads and the heaters and the overload unit, I'd love to get my hands on, even if it's just to borrow it, so I could show the example of the next stage in overload. So, yeah, if anyone out there's got one of them, let me know. Digging around a drawer somewhere. I might even try and buy one off eBay. Last time I looked, this fucking ridiculously expensive. But, yeah, do us a favour, help us out. Let me educate you, you motherfucker. Shit green screen effort. I've had a bit of a debate with this with a couple of people on messages, yeah? I said Allen and Heath at one point. That's a mixer manufacturer. Then I said Allen and something else. Then I said Allen West. And everyone said that's a manufacturer tuner. That is an Allen West OLRP overload heater. And I can't remember what that bit does. There you normally close and normally open contacts. There your ins and there your outs. And see these bits in the middle. They're the heaters. Oh, and then those heaters heat up. And inside, they adjust a bar metallic strip, which trips it here, I think. I can't remember, but that's the reset test point. If anyone's got one of them, second-hand, brand new. They're fucking rear as NST nowadays in the UK because they weren't very popular. If anyone's got one of them, I'd love to borrow it to demonstrate how that one works. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh, fucking. How the fuck do people follow me?